Oh, holy shit. Welcome back to Phoenix Ray. Ace Attorney Blind, everyone. Oh, shit. You ready for this? Yep. Yeah. So what do you remember? Oh, uh, is this... Wait, did we stop, like, mid-trial? Oh, yeah, Larry Butts came in. Yeah, because yeah, uh, the caretaker gave a very short testimony. There was nothing worse to press on, but then Larry was like, Wait, dude, I was at the lake that night, and we need, you guys need to, like, cross-examine me or some shit. <laughs> yeah, so... We're gonna we're gonna talk to him. I'm sure he's gonna be appearing very soon. Yep. We're they're doing a brief trot, like a brief recess, cause like the uh, Von Karma's gotta prep the witness. Yeah. Oh, why not? That was too close. Oh my god! Hi, bitch! Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> Sorry to keep you on edge on your seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've seen worse. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. Just like the bullet that went into that man's heart. That you shot. Yeah. You, you murderer. Yeah. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Also, sorry if you can hear the thunderstorm in the background. Yeah. It's raining waterfalls outside. Tropical storm Debbie be fucking us. Yeah. But anyways, uh, Larry was at that lake that night, right? Yep. He said he was looking for the seal ceremony balloon that fell into the lake. Oh, right. Yeah. Come over here. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. I'm dejected. Yeah. I'm looking over to the side, because I'm thinking. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? Can you say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> you seem out of it. What's wrong? Yeah, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Oh god, don't ask him about DL6. What's that? Oh. Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Uh, oh. Because I shot him. <laughs> when he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. Picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Oh my god, our, our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Oh, you meant about the perfect trial thing. I thought we were gonna make out. <laughs> perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. Ooh. And that someone is Larry. Oh my god. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No ten minute trial this time. We'll make this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was fifteen minutes. Fifteen. Everything's on Larry now. Yeah, Larry better give us a good-ass testimony or else we're fucked. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. There he is. Court is now in back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything that you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Duh, duh, duh. Von Karma didn't even have to time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about him being our big break. Is my hair fucking up? It is a little bit. Oh, wait, why am I working? No, don't put it on me. It messes up my glasses. Put it around my neck. Here, and then... That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and uh, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop deck. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Look at my look at my unhappy face and, and, and my broken neck. Yeah. I looked out <laughs> over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So he didn't fucking see anything! Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. Thanks. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? Everything. It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. <laughs> hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go before, Nick. Aye, aye, Captain. Alright. Cross-examination. 
That night, I was out on the boat in the lake. There's something wrong, Mr. Wright. There's so many things wrong, I don't know where to begin. Ah. <laughs> uh. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. By that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on the boat such a late hour? I was looking for something and I uh, found it. Looking for something? Er, uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? I was looking for Gordy. <laughs> what the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. Oh yeah, because Gordy was the air tank. <laughs> yeah. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I kindly slipped the boat back into the rental shop. Around what time was that? Oh, uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah. You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face! I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. He, he doesn't know that. The only clocks he knows are in the form of the thinker. Yeah, <laughs> he just carries that thing around and he just twists his neck. Yeah. Actually, that'd be really scary if he had one of those, because both of them are technically murder weapons and in police custody. <laughs> yeah. Where did that sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order, order. Well, Mr. Butts? Whoa, whoa. Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. Yeah, you're right. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay, no problem. That's just the most important part of this case. Hmm. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So, you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. Yeah, yeah, we get it. We gotta find you a fucking waterfall after this. I was out in a boat on the lake. Um, okay. So my question is... Um... I feel like... I was looking for something and I found it, so I quickly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Mm -hmm. Let me check out the dock again. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's I mean, fine. That's where you put it back. Then I was just in the home, I heard a bang. I looked over, didn't see a boat. I mean, I could present, like, this, right? This. Actually, it doesn't show them on a boat. Yeah, it just shows them kind of fucking standing there, so... So, so I don't think that would be it. Oh, after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Should I do Lada's? I think, because Lada's clearly said that she heard too that yeah. night. Wait a second, Larry! Wh what? You only heard one bang, you're sure? Th that's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday she actually heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? You were paying attention to all of all what what You were paying attention at all what they said? Yo, Nick, please. Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a, like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot? Are you sure? Uh... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? You're not sure? How can you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude, with my headphones. What? <laughs> order, order, and 
stop that booing. <laughs> uh, Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones? Yeah, so what? That a crime? I listen to my radio. Everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm, I don't listen to the radio. Yeah. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion? Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should you continue the testimony? Yeah, I want him to continue. <laughs> yeah. I love my boy Larry. <laughs> yeah. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Ah. Uh. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I won't. I wouldn't if I... I wouldn't if there was any other way out of this, believe me. Alright, what Larry heard. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real boomin' loud-like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can't a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem is here. <laughs> Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard that sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he would have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Man, that's that big boy word. Phoenix, what the fuck? <laughs> charade? Yeah, sure. <laughs> it's like, isn't that like seven letters? <laughs> that's a big word. <laughs> His name is the same amount of letters. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Why were you alone? So, you turned on the radio? Right. I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know. You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to all to the All Request show on the radio, see? Do you, by any chance, remember the names of the programs you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, Your Honor. Objection sustained. Oh, yeah, you're sure. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it at a really booming loud. Really booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on? Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. Well, I'm sure I heard that gunshot. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. No, I can't prove it. But I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. So what the fuck did the DJ say? What did, what did she say? Well, Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a radio DJ said to us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. <laughs> we should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Because I said so. Uh, well, how do you know if we don't ask him? <laughs> how did that work? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I guess you don't know if it's important until you get the answer, you know? Fine, very well. Mr. Bunce, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm, maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that will help us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there's one glaring ray of hope in there. I gotta press it until we get to the bottom of how it happened. Wait, if you said press it, does that mean I just continue pressing, or... 
Or is I that think, just I like... think that means you gotta present on that. Okay. Being alone on Christmas Eve. Eve. I was listening to the radio. Uh, I was listening to it really loud. That's fine. But I'm yeah. sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. She said, hey, it's almost Christmas, and I heard the gunshot. That's the full testimony, right? Yeah. Is it this, this part? Hey, it's almost Christmas. Sometime on the 24th or 25th. Mm -hmm. Ah! Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. There's something the matter, Mr. Wright. Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, Aunt. Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? That he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefusable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. I'm not reading that format. <laughs> Fifteen minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him, suspicious. What? Say what? <laughs> hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Wait, don't we have evidence that is right, technically? Oh, let me check. Okay. Oh. Check the other photo that we got from Lada. Wait, well, not that one. <laughs> not the dead man in the elevator. I heard two sounds like gunshots just after midnight. Yeah, but what is it that one? No, it's the other one. Shows an empty lake taken automatically on 1224. Yeah, and it was still set to respond to things like a bang. Oh, that is true. You make a very good point. There is no mistake in your honor. He's heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. Don't smile on me. <laughs> I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Was I right? <laughs> look at this photograph. <laughs> Every time I look, it makes me laugh. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Ms. Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. This tan stamp at the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh? Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise at the lake at 11.50 p.m. This is why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard the gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that is the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minute pause between them. Ah, this is, this is making sense and that's why they claim that it's two shots because I guess gunshots went off after that time, but the shot that killed the guy must have been the one before, because it was only one shot. Mm -hmm. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 11.50 was a gunshot. Why, the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. 
Hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you have any. Uh, the evidence I was thinking is just the fact that, I mean, it, it says fire three, fired time. three times. That's my, that's my first thought. Yeah, I don't see anything else that we have that would... Yeah, because cause this, this, shouldn't, this shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter, shouldn't matter, shouldn't... Uh, it no, very much matters. Uh, shouldn't matter, shouldn't matter... Shot from approximately one. Uh, I think I think this is too abstract. I think it has to be the gun. This is my evidence. Point a Glock at Von Karma. <laughs> the murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. Then, when then was the last shot fired? Oh wait, now I realize the truth. That third shot was the shot that Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. Hmm. That wouldn't make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think I was in quick. Wait a second. Gunshot separated by 25 minutes. What's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the steel samurai? Oh, uh, yeah, of course I remember. That murder in the case had the same idea as murder in this case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edward's guilty verdict. We got a, I got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right, I mean, is it safe? Safe? We already got a guilty verdict! We have nothing to lose! You just- you just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick! Your Honor! Yeah, yeah, yes, Mr. Wright, you're, you're so intimidating when you slam your hand like that. Yeah. The testimony just now has cleared this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk tisk tisk. So you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Uh, how about you shut the fuck up? <laughs> Wrong, Von Karma. The man who sh was shot that night... Oh, a man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on the lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It sh couldn't have been suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit it is a hard it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have oh shit, that's you. <laughs> we have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015. But Larry heard gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot at the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the board are. Hmm. Couldn't be this one, because, like, like you literally just said that the only way for it to work would have been, uh... Oh. I don't remember the answer. Oh, I think I have a sneaking suspicion. Of course. It was Edgeworth and the murderer. And the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50. I'm thinking he took... 
uh, Edgeworth out on the boat to be uh, to be killed as well. I think he missed the shot on on Edgeworth and he the just, body he, going into the water. I think that was Edgeworth was, swimming to get away from him. But we saw Edgeworth on the boat though. Was he on the boat? Yeah, remember the whole intro cutscene to this, like the turnabout goodbye. Did, did that actually show him on the boat itself? I think it is. Yeah, I mean, we I, just I, saw, I, like, I thought I thought he just said that he found it on the boat. So couldn't that have meant he went up to the boat? I don't know. <laughs> Either that or, or the well, because no, 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 no. It would it would have to be it would have to be that right because the from the position it was the dude who shot yeah, and but, then the other person went into the into the water. After the unless <laughs> um, unless Edgeworth was trying to kill whoever was yeah whoever was uh, I don't fucking remember he assumed the disguise of Mr. Ham and it met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes. Edgeworth didn't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright, tell us the name of that murderer then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... <laughs> Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth was the murderer! <laughs> Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You, you don't know? But again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out to the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of the crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Show the judge where the murder really took place. I'm thinking... Like it was the boat shop itself? Yeah. Here, of course. The boat shop where he lives. That way, he can meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have any proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? No. <laughs> Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> He's... <laughs> <laughs> That night, he was out on the, on the lake in the boat, searching for something. He, he finds it and returns the boat. And then, just as he starts to head home, he hears a gunshot. He hears a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would it be other than where he just returned the boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Cord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> at least we're honest. But I think I'm. We'll start at the very beginning. I'll take it slow. I might just have to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. <laughs> It was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. And then he got on the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? I still think it was the boat shop caretaker. Mm -hmm. That's my opinion. Okay, alternatively, it could be the reason that Miles had, you know... Like, shot it? Yeah, that his, like, prints were on it was that he actually did shoot it. Uh, but I don't like that headcanon. I want to go with the boat shop yeah. <laughs> caretaker. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. Shot twice. Both Miss Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Fuck! <laughs> 
I know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. How about you shut the fuck up? Tell us why the murderer had to fire choice. Uh, I can I can kind of see both of these being because like my logic would have would have been the first one, but mm -hmm. the, the, but the create a witness kind of makes more sense. Yeah. So I feel like it is this one. I believe you shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness. The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That secures that anyone who heard the shot will be looking at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did that just after hearing the first shot. Next. The murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then... The murderer jumps into the boat himself. Oh, from the boat, fuck. Leaving the pistol in the, in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls in place. The boat shopkeeper swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body. And then threw the body into the lake. That is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. I feel like... I feel like this isn't fully right. Like, part of, part of me thinks that this is too clean of a... Like, I don't know. I think I think this is too clean. These, these uh, trials have... If they've taught me anything, it's that my first guess, or, you know, my guess in, like, the middle, <laughs> has not been right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I'm, I'm feeling like that this is, uh, this is some cat. That's gonna happen? Cause like I feel like it's it's too clean for this guy to just uh, to just like be like, be like ah oh, I don't remember anything and then he's just like, oh yeah I actually did kill those guys. <laughs> yeah. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker quickly. <laughs> Larry's just sitting there like what the fuck am I supposed to do here? <laughs> With the bailiff. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker. I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Oh, finally. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Finally, this motherfucker gets to testify, holy shit. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense have said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed, Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Oh, uh, your, your honor, sir? Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet, you fucking idiot. <laughs> the witness has just appeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. Wh what? What should I do? <laughs> A bailiff, whack his pee pee. Don't <laughs> worry. Find him quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, and I want to know who he is. Very well, court is adjourned. We did it! We did it! We did it! Yeah! <laughs> Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, you sounded so excited about that, you're like, oh, I gotta fucking <laughs> Yeah. Well, at least we got out of there under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. 
Sure, once I shifted through that, his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our case wasn't so down the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Bring! Did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. He's gonna get off? I'm, I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What, what do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. I have a sneaky- I have a sneaking suspicion about something. I don't know whether I should what, let- What, that he's him... gay? <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. But I don't know whether I should- I should let him talk, or- Oh wait, I just realized. Manfred von Karma. He's 65. Yeah, he is a vampire. Mm, yeah, old caretaker. Age question mark. Thinks he runs really a restaurant. Alright, I have- I have a sneaking suspicion about something. Mm -hmm. Should I let him talk, or should I say what I'm thinking first? Yeah, just say it. go ahead and say it. Alright, so, what I'm thinking is... So you know how, um... You know how the center of this entire trial, like what Phoenix is saying, is essentially that Miles is being framed. Mm -hmm. I think that's right. But I don't think the person who's framing him is right. What, I think, the caretaker? I think the caretaker is the person that got off by Robert Hammond, but I think he was being framed back then, too. I mean, didn't the spare medium, like, say, like, it was that guy? <laughs> yeah, but the- I, didn't they- didn't they mention something about, like, um, about her being wrong? Yeah, she summoned the spirit of Gregory Edgeworth, and Gregory Edgeworth said, like, oh, it was that guy, and then he ended up being proved innocent. Yeah, so what I'm- what I'm thinking is that I don't know if someone else is going to come into play in this trial mm -hmm. but um but I'm thinking that uh the caretaker and Edgeworth are both being framed I'm thinking that there is someone that's behind them and I think they're also behind the DL6 incident mm -hmm. and so the caretaker didn't actually do uh, like I'm thinking the caretaker was the one that was you know on trial mm -hmm. back then but he was also innocent in that point. Uh, and... Okay, that's... That, I, I, don't, I don't know who it is, but okay. that, that's, that's just my thoughts. Uh, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... He is gay, isn't he? Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What about... What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> How much time are we at? Almost 40 Wait. minutes. Yeah, we can, we can edge this next part. Alright, I don't know if we're gonna be able to find, like, a good stopping point, but... Yeah. But we can go into we it a little bit. I'll keep an eye on the time. <laughs> we're at the Larian Cola office, by the way. I'm not sure if you knew. <laughs> what was Mr. Edgeworth talking about? I don't know. A memory of a crime that I committed. A memory of murder. We didn't say anything to him, we just fucking left. <laughs> Do you really think Mr. Edgeworth killed? I don't believe it. Not Edgeworth. Some painful memory has been troubling him late, recently. But he's never... He would never take anyone's life. Never. Nick. Oh. Yo, how's everyone doing? <laughs> it's your boy, Larry Butts in the, in the his house. Yeah, it's the his house? <laughs> What'd you think of my performance today? That actually did save us, so... Look at, his, look at his hand, he's uh, like... Wait, I can do that, hold on. He's just swinging it back and forth. <laughs> Adam's swooning in the aisles, huh, Maya? Mm -hmm. Swooning? Me? I'm 17! 
Oh, oh, yes, I do remember feeling faint. From excitement. Right on, tell me the truth. It was like love at first sight, right? Right, Nick? You love me too, huh? Huh, me? I, well, maybe my heart's get the beat or two. <laughs> yeah, I always knew you were get. <laughs> why is he so dead? <laughs> why why did the music go? <laughs> I think you can do better than that. <laughs> Come on! I saved Edgeworth in there, dude. Edgy. You guys should be bowing before me. Yeah, bow before your hero. Thanks. Thanks, Larry. Uh, I think I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> this just leaves? <laughs> I think I'm gonna present my attorney's badge to you. Woohoo! I was hot out there. Hot. I'm glad someone's happy about how this case is going. <laughs> he seems too happy to care about anything I show him. Alright, that's our hint that he doesn't care about anything we have to show him. Yep. Larry, you really helped in the trial today. You did! If you weren't there, Larry, I'm sure Mr. Edgeworth would have been found guilty. Yeah. <laughs> but seriously, Nick. <laughs> that bunch of caretaker guy is pretty suspicious. But Edgy ain't off the hook yet. Way to spoil the mood, Larry. Hey, I'm just a guy sitting in the audience, you know? But from where I was sitting, Edgy seemed pretty... edgy. I mean, can you really know if he's telling the truth about that night? I mean, on the stand, he said, like, yeah, pretty much everything Phoenix said was, like, mostly to a team. Yeah, he said mostly correct. That's what, that's what I'm thinking that, um... I don't think it was actually the caretaker on that, on that boat. I think it was someone else. Um, and that... It's like a double framing, basically. Mm -hmm. Like, whoever is doing it is, like, covering both of, like, his asses with two people instead the of one. The caretaker has an actual twin brother! <laughs> maybe. And maybe that's who Keith is! <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, maybe it was Keith all... No, yeah. it was Meg. Oh my god, Meg! <laughs> Nick? I don't know. But, what do I do with... What do I know is, I'm going to believe in you two until the end. Us two? Edgeworth and who else? You mean me, right? Nah, he means me, right, Nick? Yeah, you, Larry. Not me. <laughs> but but why you, Larry? Huh? Um, actually, yeah. Why me, Nick? Mm, enough with the silent treatment. <laughs> Nick, why do you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? I mean, he's changed recently, true. But when we first met him, he was kind of a Dick, don't you think? Well, uh, I don't know if you knew this, Maya, but he's secretly my boyfriend. We've been, uh, talking. <laughs> you didn't know him back then. Back when you wanted to be a defense attorney. Wait, was that when you two were classmates? Yeah, in grade school. They saved me. Miles and Larry, they saved me when- and I'll never forget it. That's why I became a defense attorney, you know? What? Hey, hey, Larry, what's he talking about? Huh? Um, uh, sorry, I kind of forgot. Great. <laughs> uh, okay, Nick, out with it. I'm going to hear this story today, and that's final. Okay, okay. It's kind of a long story, so hang in there. It was at the very end of third grade. I was on trial. A class trial. A class trial? Oh my god, is this day in Rampa having class trials? <laughs> you remember, Larry, spring in the third grade? A kid in our school got his lunch money stolen. Lunch money? Our school was really small. Every month, kids would bring in an envelope with money for lunch from home. Oh, I see. Anyway, this kid's envelope disappeared with $38 still inside. That's a lot back then. Oh, yeah. Now that you remember, now that you remember it, I do mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a stroke, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I can see why you forget, though. You were out of school that day. Anyway, that envelope had been stolen during P.E. class. I was coming down with a cold, so I skipped P.E. that day. I was the only one not in class. So, they thought you did it? Yeah. The kid in my class said I should be put on trial. Trial? And the next day we held a, a classroom trial with me as the defendant. I didn't do it. Guilty! He did it! Guilty! Guilty! That is guilty! guilty. Get the money back! You're such a meanie! No one play with him! Just admit that you did it! You can't hide the truth! Tell us the truth! Kill yourself! Kill yourself! <laughs> oh, first ratio! Boys, get some bitches! <laughs> you even put the cents on him? Yeah, you know, did you rob the bank the other day? <laughs> hey, did you rob the bank the other day? 
Now, kids, you know you shouldn't steal people's money. That's right, right. In the end, even the teacher didn't think... Even the teacher thought I'd done it. Go over and apologize, Phoenix. I don't, I don't know what was happening. I was so sad, I couldn't stop crying. Everyone was staring at me like I'd done it. I tried to apologize. I went to where the boy whose money was stolen was sitting. That's when it happened. Objection! That's you, bro. He shouldn't have to apologize! The only thing that belongs in a trial is evidence! Anything else has no place! You should all be ashamed, amateurs! Miles? Erection! <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he cute? It wasn't you who stole my money, was it? No. Then you shouldn't apologize! Everyone's been shouting you did it, but no one has any proof! That is why, you writer, this boy is innocent! But, but Miles, it was your money that was stolen. Yeah, yeah, he did it, he's the one. You don't need proof, he's saying sorry. Why don't you all just shut up? Oh, wait. <laughs> uh, what voice would Larry Butts have back then? Alright, I got it, I got it, I got it. This is always how it is. Everybody ganging up and picking on one person. I hit reverse puberty. <laughs> <laughs> His voice got a bad picture. My balls were so low at this time. I didn't know like that. <laughs> Just think how he feels. He said he didn't do it, so he didn't do it. I thought, I thought they said he was absent that day. Or is this the next day? The next day they had the class trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very well. I will replace the money myself. Man, teachers got paid pretty good to replace $38. <laughs> this class trial is over. That's how it happened. After that, the three of us were the best of friends. Phoenix goes up to him. Yeah, I did steal your money, by the way. <laughs> yeah, here's $38. Actually, I only have $2 left. I wanted a spending spree. <laughs> Oh, I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, I forgot I went through reverse puberty. Yeah, no, he said like this. That's when I learned what it meant to be alone. Totally alone without a friend in the world. You did a good thing, Larry. Huh, yeah, well, I was just lucky that I took the day off from school. If I'd been there, they would have thought I'd done it. Damn, that's right. So I took it kind of personally, see? When something smells, it's usually the butts. Oh yeah, after the class trial. Anyway, Edgeworth and I talked after that class trial. That's when I heard that his father was a defense attorney. I remember his eyes would shine when he talked about his father. I'm going to become a defense attorney just like my father. Like famous defense attorney. Like father. <laughs> then a few months later, he suddenly transferred to another school. The DL6 incident. Yeah, the fucking DL6 incident. Why, when are we not talking about the DL6 incident? <laughs> right. I'm not sure, but the transfer probably ha had to do something with his father's death. Yeah, I no shit. That's so sad. It was several years later when I heard Edward's name again. There was an article about him in the newspaper. The headline was something like, Dark Suspicions of the Demon Attorney. Fabricating evidence, manipulating testimonies, covering up facts. The article said that he'd do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. But why? What happened? I mean, that's not the edgy I used to know at all. That's what I thought, too. I tried to get in touch with him, but I don't know how many times. It's like... He never replied. I guess he didn't want to see his old friends. Nah, what a bit. <laughs> I couldn't just drop it, though. I wanted to meet him, to learn why he had to become who he became. That's when I decided. Wait, you don't mean... That's why? That's why you became a defense attorney? To meet Edgeworth? This is some oh gay shit. Oh my gosh, shit. This, this is so romantic. Dude, this is some gay shit right here. You you became a, like an attorney of the opposite of career of your boyfriend just to see him. That's so cute. If I was a defense attorney, I knew he had to meet me whether he wanted to or not. In court. In bed. In my bedroom, please. <laughs> Edward believed in me, and I believed in him. He's in pain, and no one's on his side. I'm the only one who knows the real Edgeworth. I'm the only one that can help him. Whoa, Nick. So, so is that why you helped me out for free? No! Uh, yes. I helped you because I believed in you. 
It says I didn't remember saying I'd do it for free. Oh, Nick, Nick. Nick, we have to save Mr. Edgeworth if it's the last thing we do, okay? Right. It very well might be. First, there's that rental boat shop caretaker. We need to find out who or what he is. I'll settle for who. I guess I can clean out some of this evidence I no longer need. Okay, let's go. Wait, what did we get rid of? Yeah, what did we get rid of? Uh... We stole the parrot. What? Are... Oh, a lot of his camera's gone. Yeah. And the second photo's gone. Yeah. Yeah, and... Oh, the newspaper article's gone. And, yeah, I guess we're not talking about Gordy anymore. Yeah. Alright, is... well, I feel like this is as good as a time as any to... Wrap this shit up? Yep. Yeah. We learned, learned about their background and why, uh... And why Phoenix, Phoenix is gay for Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is pretty cool. I still I still am holding to my suspicions that both the caretaker and Miles are being framed in this. I don't know by who though. Mm -hmm. But um, that's just a theory, a, a game, game theory. theory. Thanks for, for watching. watching. <laughs> yep. So see y'all in the next one. Yep. Bye bye. bye.